I'm sure you've heard before, focus on the process, right? Let go of the outcome. And yes, that is true, but in life, if you don't have goals, if you don't have a certain outcome that you're moving towards, you're going to be very miserable. Now, let me explain, because this is very different than most of self-help, where it's like, it's all about the outcome, all about the outcome. Here's the nuance. The reason you want to have goals, the reason you want to have a certain outcome is for what it does to your experience of the process. Having a goal, having an outcome, enhances your experience of the process. Okay, so think of it like this. Anyone play um, GTA or like Red Dead Redemption, one of those like free roaming kind of video games? Yeah? So here's how those games are laid out. There's missions, you complete the missions, and at the end, what happens? Can you still play the game? Yeah. It's just like, oh, you finished the missions, congrats. Now you can free roam in uh, this video game world. Is that fun? Can it be boring? Yeah, suddenly you're like, okay, well, this is cool, maybe for a little bit, and then you're like, well, I kind of missed the missions, <laughs> right? Now what? Okay, I've kind of won everything, eh. and it can actually lead you to this state of boredom and apathy and just like, oh, well, next. Now, what's one thing you could do to enhance your experience free roaming and playing that game? Coming up with Mission. your own missions, <laughs> right? Coming up with certain goals, things where you're like, you know what? Let's go venture over there and let's see if we can accomplish X, Y, Z. Little challenges you'll give yourselves, right? Little missions you'll just authentically come up with for yourselves. And is the purpose there to accomplish those missions? Are you like, oh, I can't wait to see if I can do this and that will make me better? No, it's just that it enhances your experience playing that game. The same in life. People are like, well, I realize, you know, that there's no real point, you know, where the consciousness experiencing everything. It's like, okay, but you're still here till the day you die. You're still free roaming in this thing called life. If you don't have goals, if there's nothing that excites you, nothing that you're moving towards, nothing that tickles your pickle, so to say, you're going to experience a lot of boredom. And you'll feel it inside. And this is what people do. They use, again, those teachings like, well, I'm not taking action because I'm letting go instead. I don't have goals because what's the point of goals? You know, it's, da -da -da. it's like, no, no, no. Have goals. Have big, big goals. Okay, letting go is not an excuse to not take action. None of you here were born to be idle. By you staying still and not having big goals, not having a certain direction, you're really withholding from life, from this whole experience called life. And you can hear this and be like, yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, I, I got goals. But very few people do. When I ask people, when I actually point it out, I'm like, what excites you? What's your goal? What are you moving towards? Very few people can actually answer that. Even in private coaching sessions. I remember there was one that I did and it was literally me and just 10 people. We were sitting around and this was like a VIP coaching session. And so imagine, right? You pay a considerable sum, you're there. And I sit down and everyone's thinking, okay, here's the roller coaster. Give me the content. And what do, is the first thing that I said? I just pointed to the first person. I'm like, why are you here? What do you want? How can I help you? And they couldn't answer it. They're like, um, well, uh, I, I don't know. I thought you were just going to do the magic? Do the magic, Julian? I was like, what about you? Why are you here? What do you want? What are you struggling with? How can I help? I don't really know. One after the other. Insane. Same here. For all of you here, why are you here? What are you struggling with? What's that one thing you're here that you're hoping to get the answer to fix it? If you don't know, then you're already shooting yourself in the foot. Or you're just here for entertainment, in which case, cool. But, although I might be pretty awesome and charismatic and funny, there are a million stand-up comedians that are better than me. Go see them instead. If you're watching YouTube and you're just doing it for entertainment, go on Netflix. There's way better things to watch if you're just in it for the entertainment side of things. Coming to an event like this, you should know, I'm going here to fix this. And I'm looking for advice and filtering all these ideas for advice to fix this. How can Julian help me? You should have a certain idea in mind. Okay, maybe like this, or maybe he'll tell me this. Otherwise, you're screwed. Okay, so have a big goal, and aim big. Okay, a lot of people, they might have that authentic goal, but it's a very small win. They kind of dabble around, right? What's that big goal? What's that thing you're looking forward to? What's that thing you're building up to and truly committing to? And that, too, adds a lot of depth to life, right? There is this certain experience that 
happens, right? This depth of experience when you truly commit yourself to something for a long period of time and you take action towards it, that's your compass, and every day you're moving a little bit closer. Because guess what? The default in life, it's surface experiences, right? Most people, the days just fly by. It's like this big blur and what they consider fun is simply consuming, right? Consuming TV, music, scrolling through TikTok, you name it. And there's not that thing there where they're just really every single day moving towards it, moving towards it, moving towards it. Okay, a great book to read, Mastery by Robert Greene. Talks about this as well. What's that big one you're moving towards? Right, even in terms of thinking your ideal life, right? If everything went amazingly well, according to plan, starting now, what exactly does that look like? And going even deeper, it's not just about what it does to that process, right? Remember too, your purpose, it's not an outcome, it's a process. Once you accomplish a goal, you'll have another goal and another goal. But it's also what it does to you as a person. It's what it pulls out of you. You should be a little bit scared when you come up with a certain goal. Like, whew, I don't know if I could actually accomplish that. There should be a little bit of fear. Not in a way where it paralyzes you, but in a way where it excites you. In a way where it opens you up. In a way where you're like, wow, better really dedicate myself, focus on this, and immerse myself on this to succeed. Right? If you're going back to the video game example, if you're playing a video game that's just way too easy, you're not really going to lock in. Right? It's only when there's those truly challenging moments where you're like, oh, this is a little bit scary, not paralyzing, where you're like truly immersed, truly present. If you haven't had many of those experiences, start asking yourself, what are those goals? And it can be whatever. Right? And don't look externally, ask yourself, why are you here? You're free roaming till you die. We're all going to die. At the end, we all return the video game. What are those little goals you're going to give yourself throughout in all aspects of life? Right? What are your goals when it comes to your finances, your job? What are your goals when it comes to your friendships? What are your goals when it comes to your relationships? What are your goals when it comes to yourself? And every day move towards that. That's also what will add that excitement when you wake up in the morning instead of, ah, oh, here's another day. What am I going to do to fill my time today? That's how I used to feel. I'd wake up in the morning, which is way back in Switzerland, and even when, say, I had a day that, you know, I thought I was going to do something and it turned out, ugh, I have a free day, right? An off day. It would actually bring up dread because I'm like, well, there's a certain amount of hours to fill. What am I going to do? How am I going to fill it? Oh, I finished my favorite show. Now what? What am I going to watch instead? Oh, what if I don't find another show? It's going to be terrible. Okay. Audit your life here too in terms of on a day-to-day -day basis, how much do you produce versus how much do you consume? Do you even know what producing is anymore? You could say, well, yeah, I have a job. Well, guess what? Most people at their work, and this also used to be me, you go to work and you just try to get yourself in this very dumbed down, numb, derp state to just kind of float through the day. It's all on autopilot. And you're just consuming this little mental movie you're playing in your head. I did this for a very long time, by the way. I used to work at Coffee Bean and Tea Leaf, which is like a Starbucks. When I first moved to LA back in like, 2009, 2010, um, worked at retail clothing stores, worked even at a call center, and the whole time I was just like looping this little mental movie in my mind or trying to be as tired as I could to just not even think and just let time fly by. Which is crazy if you think about it, right? Letting time fly by, that's like rushing towards death. Oh, I just, I wish today was over. Quickly, it'd be over. Trying to rush towards death. Crazy. If you audit your life back there too, all those moments you're consuming, that's the blur. Those moments where you are producing, and not just general producing, but those moments where you're truly challenged. As I said, you truly lock in. Those are those moments where you look back on life and you remember them. Right? Those are those memories. Like if you audit your life, what are the top five moments in your life so far that stand out to you? Take a moment. Actually think about it. Top five moments. Top five instances. You might even think, huh, one of those instances wasn't even that pleasant. Right? Probably most of you here had that one instance that was so unpleasant that it might have got you to embark on this path of working on yourself. It created that opening. And although it might have been the most unpleasant thing, that time you're like, enough, enough of this. And at the time it was terrible. Looking back now, you're probably a little bit thankful. And it's funny that that stands out as one of those top five moments. Right? So have big goals. Bring your awareness to those goals. 
stretch yourself. Have a certain sense of urgency too. Now, just as I talked about with you know, fear, don't use that to stifle you. It should open you up and get you more present. The same with the urgency. It's not like, oh, there's an only limited amount of time. Be scared, be stressed the entire time. No, it's aligning yourself with reality. Back to stoicism, live with death on your mind. People find that very dark, right? It's like, oh, that's so dark. Why would you live with death on your mind? Isn't that living in fear? No, that's being realistic. All of you here, you're going to die. We're all going to die. We don't know when. Yeah, it can be scary if you choose to oh, live in that fear. Or you could be like, you know what? Knowing that, how will that affect my present moment experience? How will that affect my time roaming in this video game called life? Better take advantage. Better immerse myself. Technically, you could say that it adds a certain amount of depth, right? Take that example of just kind of derping around. You're like, oh, level one, this is so easy. Playing the video game, kind of bored. Then you hit, say, a higher level, you lock in. Same with scarcity of time, scarcity of being alive. Say you had all the time in the world to live, it'd be also a very kind of surface experience. Like, yeah, I got all the time, eh, whatever. Versus, sink into this perspective. This can sound a little dark, but just take it in. Imagine right now the, the universe, right? The all, everything just appeared in front of you. God appeared in front of you and said, you have 30 seconds to live. Go. What would happen? There's nothing, you, you just have 30 seconds. You're sitting here like, up, oh, 30 seconds. <sighs> Chances are, you'd probably reflect on those key moments, but you'd also take in what it feels like. You're like, well, 30 seconds and this is done. <sighs> Air. <sighs> what does it feel like to be in my body? What does it feel like to, to live and, uh, and then you're done? It would actually add much more depth than just sitting here and just like, eh, taking it for granted. I'm just alive. Just another day and there's always going to be another day. Right? Um, you can even think of it with, say, food, right? Say, say uh, you think of your favorite food, whatever that is. What's your favorite food? Chicken. Chicken. I was assuming here in Texas, everyone's like, barbecue and chicken. <laughs> Let's just say, you take barbecue and chicken for everyone here, and you're presented with the best barbecue, the best chicken, right? Where I'm actually curious, what's the best barbecue chicken spot here in Houston? Reeves? Rudy's. Isn't that from Austin? Uh, okay. So say you take that. You have that dish, and you'll never have another barbecue dish again. That's the last one you'll ever have. It'll go extinct from the world. Would you enjoy it more than you usually do? Yeah. Right? If you knew it was the last one, you're like, well, better really milk the taste. You're like, oh, that chicken. Right? Same with life. You have a limited amount of time. Immerse yourself. Use that to add depth of experience, but also urgency. Every single day, although yes, it can be good to take some time off. It can be good to consume, right? Yin and yang. Expansion, contraction. But don't just get locked in the contraction. Don't think that you have forever. Next time you're like, oh, let me spend another day just kind of surfing through Netflix. Well, is that the steak or the sprinkle, the spice on top? For most people, that's the steak. That's the default. That's the foundation. No. Make your foundation immersing yourself, acting. And also, that's your impact on this thing called life, your impact on the world. Okay? Now, while having big, big goals, simultaneously, okay, do remember that it's not about, as we talked about, accomplishing that goal, because when you accomplish one, you'll have another one, and another one. The goal enhances the process. But as you go after those big goals, do collect every single win along the way. Every single win, every single success. Because the default is we loop on everything we did wrong, every failure, right? Most likely growing up when you're you know, going to school, you come back and you're like, here's my grade. If you have a good grade, it's like, okay, good. You have a bad grade, you idiot, right? We bring a lot more awareness to failures versus success. Success is just, eh, okay. Chances are, if I ask you, okay, this month, this year, what are some of your failures? Probably a lot of opportunities, right? What could you have done better? Okay, what about this year? What are some of your successes? Might be harder to answer. What about today? What were some of your wins today? Do you know? Could you come up with three? Could you come up with 50? Could you come up with 100? If you can't, 
That's pretty sad. You didn't win 100 times today? You didn't win 50 times today? That's what I do. You gotta ride that momentum of wins. Lower the bar. People think, oh, if I start celebrating small wins, then I'll get lazy. No, no, no. That actually motivates you even more. Right, what's one win? I got out of bed today. There's a win. What's another win? I brushed my teeth. What's another one? I brushed it really well. Right, I had a friend, this is many years ago, this is where I first saw this, and we were on a plane, he was sitting next to me, and he was like typing, and with every single word, he would verbally be congratulating himself. He's like, oh good, yeah, yeah, you good job, good job, like the entire time. <laughs> Crazy, right? And you'd be like, oh, that's kind of weird, like, wouldn't that make him kind of just lazy? No, no, no. He was immersed, he was taking action. He was taking so much action, he was even hyper. <laughs> that's what keeps you going, right? Imagine every single day you have someone like, yes, good job, yes, keep at it, while you have big goals. You don't think that would motivate you? Right, and it does come down to shifting motivational fuel, another key concept, right? A lot of people rely on fear to take any kind of action. It's like the bottom of the bottom, right? Usually you'll wait till the very last minute to take action, that's why you procrastinate, right? It's like fear, that's the, the last thing that gets you to take action. And then as you move up, this is classic self-help, people rely on anger to take action, right? That's 99% of self-help, by the way. Any advice like, step it up, do it, don't be lazy, don't be a loser, take more action, hustle, discipline yourself. That's anger, that's self-attack, that's self-hate, right? No days off, David Goggins, the king of self-hate. <laughs> I love his material, I love David Goggins, by the way, but it is that level where it's speaking to a motivational fuel of self-hate. Now here's the interesting thing. Fear, yeah, it'll get you to take action, but anger will get you to take a lot more action than fear. You can actually be a lot more proactive, right? In fear, you're always like defending, like, oh, okay, finally, finally. Anger's like, let's do something about it. So there's the fuel of fear, the fuel of anger. But what happens if you only rely on that all the time? That'll eat you up inside. That'll be terrible. You also cultivate a toxic relationship with yourself. What's the one above that? What about desire, need, craving? Right? That there, healthier than anger, but it's also not the best. And then as you shift out of that, then it's true purpose and inspiration. Okay? Now, it doesn't mean that they're bad per se. People tend to get hooked on the level above what they're used to. So if you're someone who even doesn't take action at all, you're just like, oh, kind of in grief and victimhood, fear can be pretty good. And then people get hooked on that. Or anger can be pretty good because you have more than fear. But realize there are levels to this. Think of it as energy drinks, right? Fear is like the huge monster energy drink with sugar and everything in it. Will that give you energy, yes or no? Yes or no? Yeah. yeah. What happens if you drink it every day, multiple times a day? You'll be a typical American. No, I'm kidding. You'll die. <laughs> right? Let's say you go above that. You could have, say, anger. That might be your coffee. Right? Desire might be your tea. Purpose inspiration is, hey, get on top of your sleep. Get on top of your health. Exercise a bit. Boom. So from those higher levels, you're like, whoa, why don't they just see? But from those lower levels, if that's all you know, it's better than nothing. So do you realize, hey, what got you here won't get you there? If you're hooked on that motivational fuel of self-attack, there are higher levels. That's like being hooked on just coffee, coffee, coffee. Can't do anything without my coffee. Now, does that mean never drink coffee? Of course not. But remember, the steak, the spice, the foundation, you sprinkle on it. Make your foundation a healthy, long-lasting motivational fuel. And then every now and then, sure, you can sprinkle in some self-attack if you like. Sure, sprinkle in some fear. Sure, sprinkle in a little bit of desire if you like. But make that the spice, not the steak.